Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1959, City of Fear, starring Vince Edwards, Lyle Talbot, John Archer, Stephen Rich, and Patricia Blair. It's directed by Irving Lerner, the director of photography is Lucien Ballard, and the music was composed and conducted by Jerry Goldsmith. Now Jerry Goldsmith, he did so much uh, of the music in some of my favorite movies. I mean, he did the music for movies like The Blue Max, Planet of the Apes, Patton, Papillon, Chinatown. <laughs> yeah, for you neo-noir fans, yeah, Chinatown. <laughs> you know, he was nominated 18 times for Oscars for his music work. Uh, 18 times, but only won it once. And that was for 1977's The Omen. Now, for you horror fans, <laughs> you know, The Omen, uh, you can certainly appreciate what I'm talking about if you've seen that movie. Now, Lucien Ballard, and he's the cinematographer here, uh, he did uh, the photography for, you know, a fair number of noirs. Uh, you know, he did it for The House on Telegraph Hill, Night Without Sleep, The Killing, and Murder by Contract. And that's one I brought you sometime a while back. And that brings up a little interesting trivia note here. Edwards and Rich acting in tonight's picture, and Lerner and Ballard as you know, director and cinematographer, all four of them worked together just the year before in Murder by Contract. So doing tonight's picture here is almost something of a class reunion for them. Now tonight's picture here, it's about an escaped convict who gets hold of a canister of what he believes is heroin, but it's really a highly radioactive substance that could kill most of the population of Los Angeles. Now, as the exposure to it is slowly killing him, the police need to find him and it before the rest of the city is threatened. So, from 1959, City of Fear. Let's roll the picture. Back that knife I left in that guy? <laughs> and give back a pound of 100% pure snow? <laughs> you must be a comic, kiddo. I don't want to die, Vince. You know what this will bring when I break it down? Vince! <laughs> Miserable. Hey. At least you got a nice clean ambulance. It's more than some of us get.
interrupt this program to bring you a hot off the wire bulletin. Two criminals have escaped from the maximum security prison at San Quentin a few hours ago. Vincent Riker and William Dabner stabbed and killed one guard, wounded another guard, and the prison physician. They reached the rear of the hospital, leaped into the parked ambulance, and roared through the gate before prison officials could stop them. We have not Smart been able thinking, to determine huh? the extent of the guards and Dr. Cersei's injuries. Warden Merrick has just issued a statement to the press that both men are desperate and considered extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Dabner is described as five foot six, 155 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes. Vince Riker is six foot one, brown curly hair, and brown eyes. They are believed headed south. All the way to L.A., Warden Daddy. Warden also warns civilians that these men are probably heavily armed and must not... Heavily be armed is right. <laughs> A million bucks. Riker and Abner are not to be approached. Stay tuned for further hot off the wire details. And now back to soft music till dawn. Bunch of lying cops. Boy, thanks, mister. Things are tough, huh, kiddo? Well, it's a jailbreak. They're all passing me up. They're afraid, I guess. I could be one of them cons dressed up like a sailor. Well, maybe you are. How do I know? You want me to get out? No, I'll take a chance. Hop in the back. Sack out for a while. Well, thanks a lot, mister, uh... Justin. Vince. This sure swell of you, Vince. Okay, Sleeping Beauty. What time is it? Eight o'clock. License, please. Just your license. ID card? Yeah, this is the fourth one of these things. You're not the only one, Mr. Justin. Where are you coming from? Monterey. I, I left last night about midnight. You didn't break any speed laws, that's for sure. Well, I'll leave the speed stuff up to the young kids. What do you do? Salesman, cosmetics. Where do you live? It's right there on the registration. I know. 624 North 8th Street, San Diego. Okay. Okay, get in. 
did you get picked up, sailor? Yeah, I don't know. It was about two or three hours ago. What's his name? I was practically asleep when he told me. It's, uh... Uh... Justin. Yeah, that's right. Justin. I'm sorry, Mr. Justin. I'm not very good on names. Forget it. How about it? I got a million people to see. So have we, Mr. Justin. We bring you a special news bulletin from police headquarters. Police have just identified one of the two bodies found in the charred wreckage of the ambulance used in the daring San Quentin escape last night. The other body is now listed as a John Doe. A tri-state alarm has been issued for Vincent Riker. It is suspected Riker killed a passing motorist and has used the body in his effort to confuse police. We will continue to interrupt our regular program to bring you the latest... Some confusion. One man, holding the lives of three million people in his hands. The people should know, Mark. What? That Riker's loose with a cylinder of death, he could wipe out a city. That we don't know where he is, we'd start a first-class panic. We could evacuate. Uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. Yeah? Be anything else, sir? No, you'd better get out of traffic, see if anything's come in. Yes, sir. Where could we put three million people with no guarantee that Riker wouldn't be right in the middle of them, no matter where we send them? Since it's been such a long time. So long. Could have been longer. I didn't want you out this way. When I heard, not 
this way. What difference does it make? I'm out. That's what counts, doesn't it? That counts most. Let me take a look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't changed. You have changed. First year you take it, and the second year you change. Then you get out. Not this way. What difference does it make? I'm out the right way. Could you have waited eight years? I'd have waited. For what? An ex-con? You know the difference between a con and an ex-con? Well, there isn't any. You're just dead meat dishwashing the rest of your life. And what are you now? I'm plenty because I've got plenty. Enough so you won't ever have to work and worry again. I told you, Vince, I don't want that much. Darling, I told you before. But, baby, you've got it. We can go places, live big. Yes, Vince. What do you think I am, some kind of animal or something? Don't you think I know what's good in life and what's bad? I know what's good. So do you, and you want it as bad as I do. Whatever you say, Vince. I'm not an animal. I'm a person. I want things, especially you. Excuse me. I'm Dr. John Wallace. I'm looking for Lieutenant Mark Richards. Yes, Doctor. They're expecting you in here. Thank you. Dr. Wallace, am I glad to see you? You sound as if you might be over the phone. Chief Jensen? This is Dr. Wallace of the Air Pollution Control District. Glad to see you, Doctor. Glad to know you, sir. He's the radiological coordinator. I'm going to give it to you fast, Doctor. Last night, a convict by the name of Vince Riker escaped from San Quentin. After stealing what he believes to contain a pound of pure heroin. What do you want with me? It doesn't contain heroin. It contains cobalt-60 in granular form. Cobalt-60? Just how powerful is it, Doctor? Well, it's easily dissipated and spread. And in granular form, it's the most deadly thing in existence. Contamination begins almost immediately. Within 84 hours, you're dead. We know that, Doctor. Is it in a lead casing? No, it's in a steel cylinder. It's being used under controlled volunteer experiments at the prison hospital. Steel is worthless against those rays. What if this Riker opens it? We're just praying that he doesn't. If other people are exposed to the cylinder, they'll become contaminated too, even if Riker doesn't open it. That's what we're worried about. How big is the cylinder? Vince? Where'd you get all the makeup? I got it from, uh... <laughs> Friend of mine, we sort of changed identities for a while. I'll be right out, baby. Hmm, -mm. you stay there a minute. I want to look beautiful for you. Two years, Vince. I want you to think me beautiful. What are you doing? Nothing. Come here. I'm going to make this night last. Mm -hmm. Police are going to pick you up, you know that? I know. We won't be seeing each other for a while. Vince, can we? We can. They'll be watching you. They know about us. Won't be long, will it? Well, as quick as I can make it. Then I come back and I'll have a bundle and you and I can go away and live somewhere as long as we want. Vince, I love you so. I've waited... He's got to be in the city by now. What good are roadblocks if we don't know what to look for? There's no protection against it? Yes, there is. Line up every man, woman, and child and issue him a lead suit and a Geiger counter. Mark, that man must be... How many men in your radiological unit? About 25. That you can trust to be silent? They've all been trained in panic control. They won't talk. The cobalt is probably in a confined space. It won't be easy to detect from any great distance. Yeah, that Riker's got all the luck on his side. All right, Doctor. 
Brief your men and send them out. Washington had better be notified. Washington, D.C. Surgeon, please. I'll be in my office. back east. One of them's dead. The other's a transient. Address unknown. Riker never had any friends. Well, let's get to it. Where's Riker? I don't know. I didn't know anything two years ago, and I don't know anything now. Miss Marlowe, we want Riker. Fast. I think you'd want to help. I told you. I don't know where he is. But you were very close. Very close. Close enough that he confided in you, introduced you to his friends. Vince is a strong, silent type. And if he had any friends, he never brought them around. We like to be alone. All right, Miss Marlon. You can go. Thank you very much. Keep yourself available. Would you like the key to my apartment? That won't be necessary. But I suggest that if Riker contacts you, you let us know immediately. I will. Then you can all come over and we'll have a party. You have a lot of answers, miss. I'll tell you a few. You help Riker, you become an accessory. Every crime he commits, you commit. Whenever he goes back to the penitentiary, you go along with him. You can go. We put a stake out on our lieutenant. I don't want her to know that. Get Helen in here. Good morning, Lieutenant. Mr. Crown. Look, Lieutenant, I know why I'm here. So Riker worked for me a couple of months. Ten. Ten. I told you that at the trial. Am I a marked man just because I give a guy a job? A man who was a pusher and had a criminal record as long as your arm. Well, that's the whole story. I want to cooperate, believe me, but... Mr. Crown, if Riker contacts you, you could be signing your own death warrant. Well, I've got nothing. Riker is dangerous. If he isn't caught soon, he might become desperate. Deadly. Sure, I believe you, Lieutenant, but why should he contact me? You, um, you received a letter from him February the 4th last year. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. It was something like, uh, I'm not getting any letters, and what a swell guy I am, you know, the sort of thing. Did you answer it? Well, tell you the truth, Lieutenant, I don't remember. Are you sure? Look, Lieutenant, I got a thousand things to think about in a year. Owning an exclusive shoe store sounds fine, but it takes a lot of work to keep it. Unless something's important, I don't remember it. Did any of his friends ever contact you? Just his girl once. The reason I remember her is because once you've seen her, you've seen her. Right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Crown. You can go. Sure. I'm sorry I couldn't help you anymore. Would if I could, believe me. 
If Riker contacts you, you let us know immediately. Believe me. <laughs> now, ain't he the little dandy? Do you know him? Huh? I said, do you know him? No, no, I, uh, I don't know him. Sit down, Helen. Spit out the gum, Helen. <laughs> Spit out the gum, Helen. Helen. Four five nine nine, please. Yes, sir. Good evening, Crowns. Eddie, Vince. You must have the wrong number. Look, don't get cute, Eddie. I'm in no mood. You know what's going on. I know what's going on, but you don't. Not yet. Listen to me. Hello, Eddie. All right, honey. Sure. Cops, huh? <laughs> no. No, no, I'm not mad. Uh, listen, hold on a minute. Jeannie? Yes, Mr. Crown? I'll take this in my office. Take care of your customers, sweetheart. I'll hang up for you. That's all right, thank you. Is there something I can do for you? <laughs> sure make it hard to say no, honey. But Mr. Crown will take care of me. Get out of here. <laughs> now, baby, I'm just smart enough to know cops are smart. So if Crown is called in, it's because the cops figure Vince might contact him. Why? Because they know something I don't. What? I don't know. But cops are smart. So I'll have to go along with them. <laughs> smart? I've always been a soft touch for you, Pete. That's just ended. Okay. Mr. Crown. And Mr. Parker. I won't have you leaving this establishment dissatisfied. Believe me. I don't know anything about Riker. Why should I? And you shouldn't be here. Cops are probably watching both of us right now, putting two and two together like you're trying to do. Why don't you be smart and forget it? How about a pair of alligator shoes? With my compliments. <laughs> somewhere, but where? We haven't any leads. We don't even know what identity he's using. Stake out on a girl's apartment in a couple of bars in 600 square miles. I tell you, Mark, it's ridiculous. It's only been 46 hours. 46 years, Mark. I 
people have a right to know what's facing them. They won't know who's facing them any more than we do. Everyone will be under suspicion. The phone lines will be jammed with false reports. The people will be driven to it. They'll be scared, just like we are. The only difference is we get paid not to show it. <laughs> I don't think we're being fair. They might take it more calmly than we think. Look at the English during the Blitz. They knew where the bombs were coming from. Well, we could uh, have the mayor go on television and radio and explain it carefully and calmly. Riker might have that thing open right now. I don't think so. Why not? If it were floating, we would have detected it by now. He's going to need some kind of tools, too. But as for telling the people, it's an alternative we wouldn't choose, but it's one we've got. And you could tell them it won't wipe out the whole city. There's not enough of it. It's not a bomb. However, it will contaminate entire farms. Milk, butter, eggs. Get carried into markets on meat and produce. Into theaters and restaurants. Get carried around by people on their clothes and their shoes. On insects and birds and on children. Then you'll have to describe the symptoms to watch out for. Horse coughing. Heavy sweat. Horrible retching. Then the blood begins to break down. Then the cells. If you merely touch your skin, the watered blood just oozes out of your pores. Finally, you hemorrhage internally. Blood fills the lungs. I doubt if anyone could explain that calmly to three million people without touching off the worst panic in history. Yes? For you, Doctor. Yes? Oh, uh, fine, Tony. Now, begin your cross-section about four or five blocks from your original point. Yes, fine. Can we have another 24 hours? Yes. What about Riker's condition? It all depends how quickly he's become affected. In some cases, it's only a matter of a few hours. He could be coughing and perspiring right now. Notify all hospitals and emergency medical centers to report all cases of nausea and upset stomach due to unknown causes. The same thing applies to all doctors' answering services. Yes, sir.
बोले से टेलर We're even pulling cops out of retirement to look for you. I've been over this block 20 times, followed my phone line for seven blocks. That's what makes me sure. <coughs> you sound great. <coughs> Have some coffee and a sandwich, roast beef. I waited so long to eat now, not even hungry. Clothes are in the suitcase. A hammer and the chisel. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just been sweating and drinking and sweating and drinking some more. You got a drink? No. I should have stopped for one. And expose yourself more? <laughs> That would have been dumb. Look, knock off this nuts and dumb stuff. You're not talking to some punk. I'm the guy that made you a lot of dough. All right, Vince. You want to play big shot? Play with somebody else. One word for me, and you're out of business. Look, who's hiding you? Taking care of you? I mean, they wanted to find out who supplied me. Who told them to take a walk? I'm big with other people, but not with me. Look, Vince, I got no argument with you. Great. Get yourself a pencil and paper, and I'll hand you a half million. Look, Vince, this is no time to. All oh, right, now that feels better than anything. You ready? All right. One pound of snow, four hundred and forty grains to the ounce. We cut it. Where'd you get the stuff? They're conducting some secret junkie tests up at Q. <laughs> Does that hand you a laugh? There's no secrets with 3,500 cons, Lou. Boy, I feel rotten. I just figured out why the cops haven't mentioned this. They could follow a peddler right to you. Believe me, that's it. I knew that yesterday. Yeah, but if they get into a bind about not finding you, they will release it. So what? Do you know a junkie who can't smell a fix a hundred miles away? Look, Vince. In 24 hours, I can have you in Miami, then over to Cuba. Sun, ocean, casinos. Just taking it easy. Sound good? Who buys in Cuba? Look, when the law finally gets around to realizing that you're gone, they have to figure that the stuff is gone too. But it's here with me. Things quiet down, get tucked away in the files, and we've got a million. Well, I don't buy the Cuba bit. Look, this stays. I stay, and you get rid of it when I say so. Vince, it's Pete Hallen. And he did. What? He was in the store when you called. He could have told the cops. Well, if he did, I want him in here now. Are you alone, Pete? <laughs> You're kidding. Well, look, I'll open the door, and then you put your arm in. Real easy. Oh, Vince, my arm! Now the truth, are you alone? No, oh, Vince, I, please, I swear, please. Things are rough all over. How'd you know I was here? Well, I, I've been waiting for you, Vince boy. <laughs> you can use me, Vince. It's big enough. <laughs> Rabbit ears, Pete. But look, make yourself at home. Have some coffee. Twenty-five grand, no more. Oh my word! <laughs> Where'd you learn this one, Vince? I got a few. You better burn those clothes. Vince, it's dangerous for you to stay around here. I'll work on it here tomorrow. Hello again. Now earlier on. We saw there, you know, where Vince Edwards goes up and he puts coins in that TV or radio, whatever it was, there in the motel room. Yeah, back in this era, it was very common for motels and hotels to have coin-operated radios and TVs in the rooms. You know, they would charge you for using them. You know, you. 
however amount money it was and you would watch it maybe for an hour or so but yeah that was actually fairly common for this era but so far in the picture here tonight we see it is somewhat prophetic you know we haven't had a three mile island yet we haven't had a chernobyl yet you know so dealing with those themes of of radiation exposure to a city uh, the picture is something ahead of its time right here. But what's really strange is, so far, he hasn't tried to open it yet. I mean, if he thinks it's heroin, you think he would want to open it and test I mean, that, that part seems a little strange. But now, the substance in that canister, you know, it's Cobalt 60. You know, that's what we hear in the picture. Okay. Yes, cobalt-60 is a dangerous radioactive substance, okay? In a highly concentrated form, and if you're exposed to it in very close quarters. But, is there saying here in the picture how it's a danger to the entire city? You know, a city the size of Los Angeles that part is a little wildly exaggerated. But there is a recorded instance uh, of a deadly incident of it. Uh, it was a time, uh, it was like 2,000 workers uh, were exposed to it. They were working in a scrap metal yard in Thailand. And many of those workers did become ill, and yes, some of them died. Now, Lyle Talbot, and he's the one playing Chief Jensen, he was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but he grew up in Nebraska, uh, mostly the towns of Brainerd and Omaha. Uh, his mother died shortly after he was born, so he was raised by his grandmother in Nebraska. Now, after he graduated high school, he had all kinds of oddball jobs. He worked for a while as a hypnotist assistant, as a magician, and he was an actor in tent shows in theaters, basically across the American Midwest. Now, he appeared in over 175 films from 1931 to 1960. Uh, did a lot of TV work as well. In fact, his TV work, he's probably best remembered for his TV work. For uh, he, he had recurring roles in The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet and also The Bob Cummings Show. Now, for some of his best remembered films, he was in The Purchase Price, No More Orchids, Murder Is My Business, and Chick Carter, detective. Well, let's get back to City of Fear. Headquarters. Put me through to Dr. Wallace. <clears throat> Wallace. District 5 covered. No results. Oh, okay, Timmins. You better start making another round right away. Over. Uh, where's the chief? You want me to wake him up? No, I haven't got anything to tell him. I don't know. Maybe our directives are all wrong. 
We said from unknown causes only. Every report of sickness has been from overeating, over drinking, or intestinal flu. Yes, Wallace. No, no, Tony, nothing yet. Chief, I would have awakened you. I wasn't sleeping. Riker isn't in custody in 24 hours. I'm notifying the mayor. Bill, you can't. That's my decision, Mark. Not a minute longer. You think I like it? I'm praying it won't be necessary. We have to risk a panic in order to be prepared. Unit 32 to headquarters. Unit 32 to headquarters. The last complete report coming in over an hour ago. Well, at least he hasn't opened the cylinder yet. It's almost 60 hours, John. Won't that make it easier to detect? Not if it's in a confined space. If Riker... Jensen? Timmons? It's my man. The devil with runcheons? Where? Fine. Don't let anyone touch that car. Doctor. Wallace, 5100 block, the Palm Drive. Car with a dead man in it. Riker? Could be. He didn't die of radiation. He was murdered. Well, then someone must... Got there first and now has the cobalt. Let's go. Have a car ready for Lieutenant Richards. Have all units in the Palm Drive area proceed there at once. Talk to a man named Timmons until Lieutenant Richards gets there. Yes, sir. Have an ambulance and tow truck proceed to the same area. Still holding over 200 points, sir, Doctor. This guy's been yapping about a hot car with Riker dead inside, Lieutenant. That's right, Sergeant. But that ain't Riker in there, Lieutenant. It's got into the metal, John. Pete Hallen. Had a chance to go through it? It's not in there, Lieutenant. It would have registered. Say, what's this all about, Lieutenant? Never mind, Sergeant. Let these boys handle it. Just keep these people moving. That car's been completely stripped, too. Registration, license plates. There's not even an old matchbook cover in there, Lieutenant. Not all, Timmons. Raise that hood. Get the motor number. This may be Riker's big mistake, John. Let's just hope you have time to take advantage of it. Unit 1 to Unit 2. Go ahead, Mark. Pete Hallen found dead in an unidentified car. Hallen? What about the other thing? It's gone. I suspect this is the missing car. I'm getting the... Now, here's the engine number. LHV 130265457A. Repeat. LHV 130265457A. Good, Mark. I'll get to it myself. Out. Well, at least that still leaves Riker. <laughs> Special bulletin from police headquarters. A little more than an hour ago, police discovered the body of Pete Hallen, a petty hoodlum and former acquaintance of Vincent Riker. The body was found in a car believed to be the one stolen by Riker during his daring escape from San Quentin three days ago. 
A note of mystery was added as newsmen reported the presence of some men with strange instruments who were carefully handling the car and Helen's body. Chief of Police Jensen was unavailable for comment. Yeah? I just heard, Vince. What are you trying to do? Look, Eddie, don't cry over bums. Well, you didn't have to kill him. Vince, you'll have to get out of town. Don't start that again. Do you know what you've done? The cops... Are... Cops, cops. Look, I'm sick of hearing about cops. This cold is killing me. My nose is even bleeding. Cold? Nosebleed? Listen to me, Vince. Shut up, will you? <laughs> Look, I don't have any wheels, so... So why don't you pick me up in a half hour and get me some penicillin or something? That wouldn't be very smart. By picking you up, I mean. Look, what are you trying to pull, Eddie? Use your head, Vince. We're both in this. I'm the only chance we've got to keep out of it. Believe me. Eddie, I told you that I... Listen to me! <laughs> the car. The car's got to get tabbed. I stripped the car. The motor number. It can be traced through the... DMV doesn't have a record of it here, Lieutenant. Uh, naturally. Call Sacramento. Ask them to relay the information directly to the police of the resident city and have them contact us. That'll save a little time. Yes, sir. So I like beautiful things. Thank you. Jeannie, be the boss for a while. I'll be back about 2.30. <laughs> Sorry, Lieutenant Richards yes. has no comment. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to get that information to the chief's office. Right. And I've got it. Hank, check the reports from General Hospital. Yes, sir. Still the same? Yeah. I want all Helen's clothes and effects immediately. Still the same. Nothing new on this end either.
This is Helen's stuff. The clothes had a very low count. But by the nail head of these, these shoes, we figured he was exposed about an hour. Yes, I think we have the style. I'll check in the back. Sick. You make me sick, Eddie. Where have you been? You're cr getting excited about nothing. Just like you when you climb onto this, huh? Where have you been? Getting a suit altered. Some shirt, socks, the works. <coughs> Ticket to Miami. Leaves at 11 tonight. You'd like that, wouldn't you? You'd really like that. You'd like to handle this too, huh? Well, I'm gonna stay whether you like it or not. Look, Vince, I've been trying to get along with you. That's an easy ride for a half a million. That stuff is dead in this town. Nobody will touch you but me. <coughs> and you know it. <coughs> the dumbest thing you did was to kill Pete. The cops will be questioning everybody who knew him. It isn't like you. You're a lone wolf. He was a leech. Everybody knew him. Could have told anybody. That's your word. Yes, it's my word. And the only one you've got. I've got the key to your freedom. <laughs> you better slow down. No, Vince. You slow down. And until you do, I do nothing for you. What do you mean by that? You're the big shot. I've got the experience. Think about it. I just did. Lieutenant Richards. Well, great, hold it. Get me a car. I'll take this down. Yeah. Yellow cab garage. Cab number 3045. All right, wait there. John, a hot cab. Hank, check this stuff out. Shirt. 
excuse. Excuse. Genuine alligator. Look, how long are you going to keep the cab tied up? As long as necessary, Mr. Milliken. I'll see that you get a receipt for it. Well, certainly, certainly. Uh, uh-huh. I told you. Fifty or sixty pickups at least. I'll have to keep this. Well, I have to have it back, you know. Our records... I'll see that you get it back. Yes? I just talked to the driver, Sam. He's a little confused, but on his way to the lab. The other driver that we got has nothing to worry about. Hmm. Hollywood Garage. Yeah, right here. Well, thanks. Richards. Yes, Hank. You stay right there. Notify Chief Jensen. Thanks. Riker's not smart. We're just stupid. Manager. Get everyone out. Watch this alley. Mark, this room is burning up. Yeah. That's Riker's work, all right. Call my office. What? Just a minute. Call my office, tell Sergeant Johnson what we found here. How long have we been in this room? I don't know. Maybe ten minutes. Get this girl to the hospital right away for complete checkup. Hey, leave that with me. Take the call books in here? I don't know. The room is hot enough to be. Mark. Yeah. It's been here. The shavings are from that canister. Dead end. Another dead end.
yes, yes, I understand. Yes, all right. I said all right. Don't tell me. Let me guess. The mayor. Blasting the whole thing wide open and what a mess. What is it? Still holds. At one o'clock, he's pulling the switch. Going to inform the public of what we're up against, and he's going to make an appeal to Riker to give up the cobalt. He can't. He and we that. can't jeopardize people's lives any longer. He says. Oh, I know what your feelings are, Mark, but we do know the cobalt is in the city, and we could get the children out at least. What about the panic? Well, we'll try to control it. Try. You'll try. We're going to sound a general alert. As soon as the sirens go off, we'll close up the city. We'll move in and batten things down and try to keep them in line. One o'clock, the mayor goes on radio and television to inform the public and... and to make a plea to Riker. Do you think Riker is going to believe you? But we've been lucky so far. The moment he hears that report, he's going to open up that canister just to see what's inside. Somebody's got to know something. You've tried them all. They're all dead. Except for the girl. I'll get her in here. I'll keep at her until I find out something. There isn't time. I'll keep after her until the time runs out. Here she is, Lieutenant. I don't know why you've brought me down here again. But I don't like it, and I don't like you. Hank. Won't you sit down? I'm not going to be here that long. Where's Riker? I don't know. You're a very good friend. You were going to be married. I haven't seen him. I know you have. You don't know anything. I haven't seen him, can't you understand? How did you find him? I haven't. I've never seen him. I don't know where he is. Just leave me alone. <coughs> Just leave me alone. <coughs> 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 We'd well, better get this girl to the hospital right away, Mark. Hank, emergency. Mr. Justin, what's going on in there? Go away. Are you drunk or something? Well, you've got this room in a fine state. You get out. Look at that. You'll pay for it. I'll see to that. You get out. Going around breaking up things. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You get out or I'll kill you, you old witch. Dr. Wallace? Yes, Dr. Perrin. Yes. Lieutenant Richards. How do you do? How do you do? Is it what we thought? Oh, yes. It's a very high count. That girl is in serious condition. I see. Well, remember, Doctor, this is in strict confidence. Oh, yes, of course. Do you know what this is? It's a Geiger counter. That clicking means that you have radioactive poisoning. Just fainting. Oh, you're, <coughs> you're a very sick girl. You mean I'm not sick? Yes, you are. Miss Marlowe, you have radioactive poisoning. Riker thinks he has heroin in that canister. But it isn't heroin. It's radioactive cobalt-60, and it's killing him. Do you understand? It's killing him. No. You're, you're a lying. very sick girl, but Riker is dying. If we get to him soon enough, there's a chance we can save him. A slim chance, but a chance. Throw him back into prison? Look, I don't know how much you love him, but even prison is better than death.
You're all right. We can't stay in here longer than a couple of minutes, Mark. He's gone. Get everybody out of here. I don't want anyone near. Call for more units. I want this whole area roped off. instructed not to approach suspect until the arrival of proper personnel. Unit 11 to HDQ have received instructions. Over. Sick or something? We interrupt this program to bring you a special broadcast from Mayor Benjamin Garrett. Ladies and gentlemen, His Honor, Mayor Garrett. My fellow These guys, they can talk any time. It is my honor <laughs> to inform you of a grave and immediate crisis in our city. I ask you not to be alarmed. Only by our being calm can we avert a possible disaster. A few days ago, a metal container was stolen See, from... have you been drinking or something? Mind your own business. This cylinder was believed to contain a large supply of heroin. <coughs> it actually contains a substance known as cobalt-60, a highly radioactive material. <coughs> cobalt-60 is one of the most dangerous elements in existence. Look, fella. The man I, who has I don't want any sick or drunk people around here. Maybe I'd better call an ambulance, huh? He is a dying Fella, man with no hope. Please, why, why don't you go, huh? Shut up! Immediately. I beg him not only to save his own life, but the thousands of other lives that can become fatally contaminated <laughs> if the canister is opened and the cobalt allowed to escape. Now, please listen to me. The canister does not contain heroin. It is certain death unless you give it up right now. No. It's worth a million. Michael, I beg you to do as I ask. To all of you listening, please. It's a lie. It it's worth a million. Desperate speed to bring Riker to justice. And already, civil defense units are preparing to evacuate all children in the event Riker succeeds in eluding the. <laughs> your life. Give it to me. There's still a chance to pull you through. Blind!
welcome back. Now, how do you like all of that old school technology that we see throughout the picture here? <laughs> I mean, you know, we can look and laugh at that today, you know, considering what we have now. But, you know, when I was a little kid, I remember back when all of that stuff, that would have been considered state-of-the-art technology. And technology or the lack of it. You remember those scenes where Vince, you know, he, he was looking for the canister in his car and he can't find it and the camera zooms in on the front seats and zooms in on the back seats? Did you notice? No seat belts. Yeah, I can barely remember back when cars still didn't have seat belts. And I remember what it, it you know, if people had an older car at the time, yeah, they, they, there was a point where they were required for the front seats, but not the back seats. It would be sometime, you know, some years later until seat belts were also required for the back seats. Now, I liked it especially when, you know, he, he pulls into that gas station garage, you know, I can remember when I was a little kid, back when garages and gas stations still looked and operated that way. You know, you'd pull into the station, you know, you'd pull up to the pump, your car would roll over that cord that went across the lot and it would ding a bell inside the building so the attendant would run out, <laughs> come up to your window, you know, fill her up, <laughs> wash your windshield, check your oil. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember those days. It, it was something back then. Now, Vince Edwards, and he's the one playing Vince Stryker here. Uh, I discussed his bio back when I brought you Murder by Contract. Uh, but, you know, he was born in New York City, born and raised there, but he attended school for a couple years here at Ohio State University, uh, which Ohio State is just like, I mean, it's like down the road that way. And he was very athletic. In fact, he was there on an athletic scholarship uh, on their swim team. And while he was on their swim team, they did win the national championship. Now, Patricia Blair, and she's the one playing his girlfriend, I discussed her bio when I brought you Cage of Evil. And that one was recent. I just brought you that one like maybe a month ago. Also, she was also in Crime Against Joe. Now that one I brought you further back, but I didn't discuss her at that time. But yeah, Patricia Blair, probably her best remembered work was when she had the role of Rebecca Boone in the TV series, Daniel Boone. And, and I didn't mention it at that, at that time, but she also had a recurring role as Lou Mallory in the TV series, The Rifleman. Uh, now, she wasn't in the regular cast, but she did appear in 22 of its episodes. Stephen Rich, and he's the one playing Dr. John Wallace. Now, he was born in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, served in the Army during World War II. And when I say he served in the Army, he served in the Army. I mean, like, he saw some very heavy fighting at Guadalcanal. Now, he was in film and TV work up, you know, 1950 to 1962. Probably his best remembered work was when he had the lead role uh, in 1956's The Werewolf, and he was the screenwriter for and actor in 1957's Plunder Road. Now, if you like old pictures like this, click on the subscribe button. You'll be notified of future releases up here in the notification bell. And you can just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar or click on the Full Moon, you know, Full Moon Matinee icon down here and you can find the prior releases. And as always, I thank you. 
for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time. <laughs>